Welcome. This video is going to start to look at four important periodic trends to us as we study chemical behavior. So there are several trends or patterns that occur as you move across a period or down a family. And remember, this is known as periodic law, this repeating pattern that occurs both within the periods and within the families. And there's four trends that we'll look at. The atomic radius, which is the size of an atom, just what it sounds like the radius from the center to the outer edge, the ionic radius, which is the size of an ion, and as we'll learn, an ion is just an atom that has gained or lost electrons, and then something called ionization energy, which is the energy needed to remove an electron, and the last one is electronegativity, which is the tendency of an atom to be able to gain or attract an electron. So in this video, we're going to concentrate on atomic radius. All four trends, however, depend on the same thing. They all depend on the size of the atom. So if you can get a visual in mind of big atoms versus small atoms and how that affects the ability of the atom to gain or lose electrons, all these trends become much easier. And in fact, I think all of chemistry becomes much easier. So the idea here is that big atoms lose electrons more easily and they rarely gain electrons whereas small atoms gain electrons more easily and rarely lose electrons. And there's a reason why the large atoms are the losers and the small atoms tend to uh, do the gaining of electrons. So the trend for atomic radii as you go down a family is that they're going to get bigger. Radii are going to increase down a family. And the reason why is there's another energy level which makes the atom bigger. Remember, that's the reason we put another row on is we've started filling up another energy level where we've added another floor to our dorm building. So that means there's more electrons. I see a little typo here. There's more electrons between the nucleus and the valence electrons. So the nucleus can't pull the electrons as tightly on the big atoms as it can on the smaller ones. So for example, I want to take a look at neon versus argon. So here's neon. Here's argon, and if we think about it, neon is going to have its nucleus. I'm going to draw it over here on top of fluorine. And it's going to have the first energy level with two electrons, the 1s. And then it's going to have the 2s filled up. Whereas argon is going to have its nucleus. It's going to have the 1s and the 2s filled up, but it's also going to have the 3s filled up. So hopefully you can see that it'll be easier for neon to pull its outer electrons tighter than it will be for argon to pull its outer electrons tighter. The greater the distance out that electron is, the less influence the positive nucleus has on it, especially when there's more electrons in between. And one way I think of it is, think of it when you put papers onto the refrigerator, you hold them on with a magnet. When you put more and more papers on, that magnet gets further and further away from the refrigerator that it's attracted to, and eventually the magnet is no longer able to hang on to that pile of papers. So same thing's going on as we push electrons further out from the nucleus, they get further away, there's going to be a weaker and weaker, a decreasing attraction to the nucleus, and those electrons are going to be much easier to be peeled off by another atom. So then what happens as you go across a period? As you go left to right across a period, the atoms actually get smaller. Now, increasing down a family, that makes sense to people, but the idea that atoms get smaller as you go across a period, this tends to be counterintuitive or the opposite of what a lot of people think. But think about the structure. The atoms have the same outer energy level. You're not adding another energy level, so the electron cloud isn't get, getting any bigger. You are adding more electrons, which will repel each other somewhat more. But a much bigger deal is that the nucleus is getting larger and larger and more positively charged. And so that means the electrons are going to get pulled closer to the nucleus. So this time, let's look at sodium versus argon. So here's sodium. It's going to have its nucleus. It's going to have the first energy level full. It's going to have the second energy level full. And then it's going to have the third energy level with just one electron out there. And its nucleus has got a plus 11 charge on it. So it can pull that electron in some. Okay, so there's some attraction here hanging on to that electron. But when we get over to argon, we still have just 
first energy level, second energy level, and third energy level. And even though we have eight electrons out here, they're all hanging out in their own space. So the fact that there's eight um, each in their own space doesn't really affect anything. But now this nucleus has a plus 18 charge. That's a much stronger charge and allows this nucleus to pull all eight of these electrons in much tighter, making this element, in reality, its three levels are going to be pulled much closer together than they are over here. And in fact, that's what this graphic is showing you. If we take a look at the graphic, it's showing us that as we go across a family, sodium has a radius of 186, but argon, which also has three energy levels and actually has more electrons in its energy levels because it's got that much stronger nucleus of 18, it's been pulled in to almost half the radius of uh, sodium. And just like we talked about going down, we can see that the families do get very much bigger as you move down the family. In fact, argon to krypton, 98 to 112, 71 to 98. There's definitely an increase as we go down, and there's a, also a very great decrease as we move across the family. So here's a couple for you to try. Which of these atoms would have the largest atomic radius? So I think challenge is to find where each of these are. So carbon. Fluorine, beryllium, or lithium. Now you could just look at the numbers or look at the graphic and you should be able to see that lithium is clearly the largest. But remember why it's the largest. They're all in the same period, so they all are filling up the second energy level, but lithium has the weakest nucleus, making it the largest of those four atoms. So to try it too, what if you had beryllium, magnesium, calcium, and strontium? Well, again, you could just look at the numbers or the graphics, and you can see that strontium is going to be our biggest. But again, it's important that you be able to visualize or remember why it's getting bigger. Because they each have just two valence electrons, that's why they're in family two, but this has got two energy levels, magnesium has three, calcium has four, Strontium has five energy levels, so it is going to be the biggest. And then on try it number three here, my last example, I want you to compare barium, cesium, calcium, and potassium. And again, if you look at these fairly quickly, you should be able to see that cesium is going to be the biggest. Well, when you're comparing Left to right, the elements further to the left are going to be bigger. So potassium is bigger than calcium, cesium is bigger than barium. And as you go down, they get bigger. So cesium is going to be bigger than potassium, and barium would be bigger than calcium. So the lower left corner is our biggest loser. So lower left, those are the largest atoms, and that makes them the biggest losers. So that's an acronym I keep in mind, lower left, largest losers. And that's atomic radii.